Hey there. I wanted to give my opinion on why a protest vote is not a good idea. Some people are thinking of voting third party or independently as a form of protest, a way of making a statement. And I'm, I totally respect people who are third party members or independent voters. I have family and friends who are. And I think certainly it's a smart or a good idea for them to vote for their candidates or issues when it, you know, when they can, when there's a chance of those candidates prevailing or those issues prevailing. But in this case, we know that the third party candidate can't win. And they know that too. That's why they, they say they want to cast a third uh, protest vote to make a statement. But here's why I think that's not a good idea. First, of course, there's the the area of self-interest. If Donald Trump were to prevail, think of the Supreme Court justices, for example, that he would nominate. He's already put out a list of those. And we know that, you know, if he has these conservative justices in office, they can do a lot of damage to things like voting rights. You can look at Citizens United, for example, and how much more damage could they do if you have three or four more conservative justices Senator, on the court? How would you get the leaders in of the rival future? nations to talk to each other? So we have to. Yeah, I use a the speaker phone. If you're thinking of lodging a protest, but you probably believe in oligarchy. Well, how much could a conservative Supreme Court, how far could they go in increasing the power of the oligarchy and in increasing their ability to, to basically exploit the, the 99%? How much more difficult can they make your life, the life of your family, your loved ones, how much more difficult can they make that in the future? by increasing income inequality and fighting against things like living wages. So you have to consider, yeah, those consequences in terms of your self-interest. Then on a broader scale, you can look at, you know, the society and your community. You know, Trump, Trump is a climate change denier. Skept, not a skeptic, he's a denier. So what can he do in terms of de weakening or damaging or closing the EPA, for example, or undermining the Paris Climate Agreement? And what will that mean for things like, you know, our water, the water quality, for environmental justice? You know, poor communities are the ones that tend to suffer the most from pollution. So you have to, those are consequences on the societal scale that are very difficult to undo. You know, once they're, once they're done, you know, it takes a long time to remediate those types of problems. And then you can look at things also, even from the point of your own third party, if you participate even indirectly in increasing the all well, the suffering of people over the next eight, eight years and in the future and in creating a system where it's more difficult to change things by voting or to change things in any way because of the structure of the the changes in the structure of the economy, the voting system, you know, the, the disempowerment of the people. And then you say, well, now it's time to, do, could you please join my party? Well, that doesn't work. You know, if you want to bring people to your cause, you have to, you know, show that you can act intelligently even when it doesn't really meet up to all your ideological standards. And in this case, I think the intelligent thing to do, the practical thing to do, is to ensure that 
Donald Trump doesn't become president of the United States. And that's my, in short, my reason for thinking that a protest vote is not a wise idea.